Hello everyone, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today we're going to be looking at the CWL Elite League War against the previously undefeated professional clan, Tribe Gaming. This war was neck and neck until the last three hours when King Jeffrey put up a stunning performance of both offense and defense and were able to sustain the lead to the end with a final score of 70-67 to in this 25-25 Tunnel 12 war. We're going to take a close look at a couple of Lalo and Bad Attacks plus a very special attack at the end that you're not going to want to miss. Soon I'm going to make a video on our minor attacks against Tribe Gaming, including the raid against Itsu. So make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified as soon as that video is available. Without further ado, let's get right into the attacks. The first one is going to be a Sui Lalo against number 9. So unlike most attacks, we're going to start with the Siege Machine to take out this Inferno Tower compartment and make the base a lot more square. So the balloons in the blimp with the haste spell clear out that com whole compartment and he's going to drop the heroes over at 10 o'clock on those elixir collectors to walk down towards the eagle location but he's not going to break in or anything he's just going to make the pathing a little bit easier for the balloons and you're going to see a very interesting way to place all of his balloons that actually worked. So the heroes end up clearing out this Tesla farm and the air defense in the wizard tower. So it helps out the balloons quite a bit. Since he made the base so rectangular with the entry, he's going to be able to drop all of his Lava Hounds and Balloons just all in a line to just path across the base at the same time, and that's going to crush this base. Very much an overkill by Captain Ahab. Next up, we have the attack by Unicorn on number 11. This is going to be a Quad Quake Queen Charge Lalo, and as soon as the heroes are going to be placed, you're going to see exactly where the quad quake is going to go. It's going to go right from the outside into the eagle. It's going to let the queen get straight into the base after taking out a lot of HP on all those high HP buildings like the Expos, the Inferno, and the Eagle. So she's going to be able to walk through that a lot faster than if it was just a jump or wall breakers. combination of the Rage and the Wizard on the Hound is going to be able to take out that Hound very quickly and make sure the Queen keeps going at a very fast rate through the base. Freeze on the Queen allows the Friendly Queen to keep her ability intact while dealing with the Enemy Queen. Here's a fun fact, if the Enemy Queen is inside the Defensive Warden Radius, the queen gets an HP buff, and your friendly queen requires one extra hit on the enemy queen to take her out. So at this point, all the balloons are dropped across the base, and the balloons only have to deal with a couple of defenses and two inferno towers. With the eagle and the town hall down, the balloons are able to just wipe out the base even without the help of a bunch of spells. That's how powerful Lalo is in this meta.
So next we have Tungsten Carbide taking a small spin on the Bat Drag attack strategy. It is start off with a Golem on the Archer Tower, but unfortunately Tesla pops and the Golem decides to walk around the gold storage so it's not able to distract the Wizard Tower as it was supposed to. So the Bats are not going to be able to take out that Wizard Tower, but they're still going to be able to take out quite a bit of the base and create the inside funnel which is so powerful for a dragon attack. So then he drops dragons for each side of the funnel, and he's going to save the heroes for the back side, where they're just going to walk around the back side of the base around 3 o'clock to the 6 o'clock area, taking out the back side defenses, so then the dragons have a chance to take out the inside of the base faster. The plan works exactly as intended, keeping the dragons on the inside of the Inferno Towers, so they gut the core of the base, and the heroes are just able to walk around and clean up the trash buildings and a couple of defenses on the outside. Nice attack, Tungsten Carbide. And finally, let's take a look at the strange attack strategy by Kiki, and it's a Quad Quake Sui Hero Lalo. Definitely something I've never seen before, but you can see by the base exactly why this attack strategy was used. Tribe Gaming loves to put three Inferno Towers really close together, separated by all these wall segments so then you can't attack another Inferno Tower while in an Inferno Tower compartment. That's super interesting. And what Kiki uses to exploit this fact is Kiki uses a Quad Quake on the outside Inferno Tower compartment so then it breaks open all those walls and gets access to all three Infernos. Now unfortunately the queen did not step up to the third inferno, but it ended up being a triple anyway. So pretty much spam Lala from the bottom because having all the loons on the field is very powerful and can easily be rewarded by a triple. So the beautiful warden ability over two packs of loons over the base and sort of the Sui Stone Slammer is able to take out the town hall, only sacrificing the CC loons to the Gigabomb. So that's going to do it for part one of King Jeffrey vs. Tribe Gaming. Tune in next time to see all kinds of minor attacks. I'm Raze Gaming, and I'm out.